Hola! Again, this is your English language teacher, Jomi Iraka. And for today's video, my co-teacher will be with us and they will be discussing three different kinds of topics. That includes linguistic knowledge, grammar and its concept, descriptive and descriptive. Hope this will help you, my lovely students. Enjoy watching! Linguistic knowledge is when you know a language, you can speak and be understood by others who know that language. This means that you have the capacity to produce sounds that signify certain things and meanings and to understand or interpret sounds produced by others. There are five linguistic knowledge that is required to know a language. First one, knowledge of the sound system means knowing what sounds are in that language and what sounds are not. The second one is the knowledge of words. Knowledge of words means also knowing the certain sequences of the sound signifies a certain concepts and meaning. The third one is arbitrary relation of the form and meaning. That there are certain words whose pronunciation suggests its meaning. The fourth one, the creativity of linguistic knowledge, means being able to produce new sentences never spoken before and to understand sentences that never heard before. The last but not the least is knowledge of sentences and non-sentences, means which strings of words are well-formed sentences and which are not. Now, let us talk about components of grammar. The components of grammar are phonetics, phonology, morphology, semantics, and syntax. Number one, phonetics. It is the study of speech sounds, how sounds are produced in the vocal tract or articulatory phonetics, their physical properties or acoustic phonetics, and how they are perceived or auditory phonetics. Number two, phonology. It is the study of the sound system of a language, how the particular sounds contrast in each language to form an integrated system for encoding information, and how such systems differ from one language to another. Number three, morphology. It is the study of the construction of words out of morphemes. A morpheme is the smallest linguistic unit that can have meaning or grammatical function. Number four, Semantics. It is the study of meaning in language. Meaning in language could either be literal or figurative. With literal meaning, we take concepts at face value. Due to the variation in meaning, ambiguity sometimes occurs. Ambiguity is the property of words or sentences of having more than one meaning. Words with more than one meaning are said to be lexically ambiguous, while phrases with more than one meaning, due to its structure, are known to be syntactically ambiguous. Number five, syntax. It is the study of the way in which sentences are constructed from smaller units called constituents of how sentences are related to each other. So now you're at the last and the most interesting part of our video. We are going to talk about the descriptive and the prescriptive grammar. We all know today that grammar is really a thing for every one of us. So come on, join me as we go deep and discover these T approaches and how they work side by side. First, let's talk about descriptive grammar. Descriptive grammar is more concerned on describing the use of language of native and non-native speaker without the reference of a specific norm or standard of correct grammar. And this also signifies variation of the use of language daily. The second one is the prescriptive grammar. Prescriptive grammar is more in being formal. This is commonly used for academic purposes, as this conforms to a specific rule and standard of correct grammar. Also, this does not correlate to the descriptive grammar of using variation, because it is a long-existing standard set by native speaker. So guys, I hope you have learned something with our video. Again, if you enjoy watching this video, please don't forget to subscribe. See you again soon.